My area is very simple because it's pretty much clay in hands, right? That's the kind of beauty of the ceramics. After a thousand years, we still use hands to make something. In a way, you can say that the art itself is pretty much, it's a language, you know? So you add your vocabulary, which is a material, right? So, and every material has strengths and weakness. So what we can do is that something that ceramic can't do, but what ceramics can do is something the other material can't do. So basically you learn all a little bit of this and that and that. And once you become advanced students, hopefully they can add those vocabulary together to find their way to express their ideas. I'm telling students you can do this, right? Or their parents, right? This can be your career. And whatever if I'm not showing anything, right? So I feel, definitely feel that certain level of, of the responsibility of that. Hi everyone, this is Kensuke Yamada. I teach ceramics here at UA Little Rock. Uh, let's see. So what's going on over here is called Raku Kiln. I don't know you guys have one in your school, but uh, it's a very primitive firing from Japan for uh, mostly a tea ceremony. So we do have a Raku Kiln or Pit Fire Kiln, which comes uh, handy for if you are studying art education and uh, we do have a gas kiln and an electric kiln and if you uh, choose to be a ceramic major or art education major you are welcome to uh, learn how to fire kiln how to mix clay glaze and how to mix clay as well so today i'd like to uh let's see so what you guys i don't know every program has a ceramics at your school but uh if you say ceramics maybe the cups and bowl is something that you imagine and which is good because I don't know what you guys are eating out of it but cups and balls plates it's very important so we make those in a class we do have a, a wheel to throw pots and the people realize that I, it's a very challenging at the same time it's a really uh, interesting as well also uh, ceramics has a long history of uh, sculptural form as well so this is my work, my personal work here. I don't know, you can see, can you drop down the camera down there too? You can see my work over here slightly. So I do make a figure of a sculpture for my personal work too. So either you wanna make sculptural work or functional pottery, you are welcome. And then, so I'll show you some of the stuff I do here for my personal work. This is uh, obviously, or hopefully you see this as a head. And if you have any question, go ahead and type it up on the chat section. So my assistant Sam over here can monitor that so I can respond to your question. So I do technique called coil building. But it's not that really special anyway. It's just a caveman method, so everyone can do it. But at the same time, uh, clay is such a um, natural, organic material, so you kind of have to work with it to understand when is a good time to build and then when is the uh, time you have to stop and dry. So it takes a lot of patience to uh, create a ceramic piece. So this piece is about probably like a 20 inches in that scale. <coughs> but we do have a really large kiln, which is uh, you can fit 50 inch tall pieces. So if you're planning to make something large, we do have a kiln for it as well. And my background, is actually when I was in, in, I mean, I am originally from Japan and I've been in the state almost 21 years or so. And uh, my background, what I studied in Japan was uh, speech pathology. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but I studied speech pathology in Japan. And then I came to America and uh, all of a sudden I study art. So I, I, I'm not sure you guys already have a plan that uh, that's what you want to study when you come to college, but a uh, great thing about uh, college like here, 
is that you can uh, spend your first year and second year to try to find what you like to study, what you like to major. Once you find a major, what, once you find something you like to study, two or one more years or even three more years that you can focus on the, uh, what you want to study. And sometime from a high school, you already know what you want to study when you go to college. Okay, you wanna you wanna be a, you wanna be a what illustrator and draw cartoon for Dragon Ball Z? Why not? But uh, another great thing about being a college like this is you get to take other classes and you might learn something that uh, you didn't expect. So um, you know either you have an idea of what you wanna take or you don't have any idea what you wanna study. I think it's a good place to come. And uh, we have, I think Andy also introduced, we have more than just ceramics, wood and uh, furniture, sculpture, drawing, painting, and uh, jewelry classes. Do you remember the first time you touched clay? Well, actually, it goes all the way back when I was a little. So, I'm way older than you guys, so back then, I didn't have a sort of like a figurative toy as a child, so I had a chunk of clay to play with. So before I go to bed, I take chunk of clay and made a little robots and stuff, and great part of a clay is how malleable materials are. So arm grew back and the head comes back and you chop the head off and then reattach arm together. And I mean, it, it was a mess on the bed. But that was really the first time I touched clay. But it wasn't quite sure that art can be a career for uh, my life. So I decided to you know, pursue something else back then. But uh, you know, if you study art, the first thing you want to be is, of course, the artist. You want to be the maker. But then the other thing is you can be educator. You know, we have a new art center opening up. Is it this year or next year? Next year or this year? Next year, okay. So when they open up, a lot of people work there is art majors. People at the administration office, people run student studio, people run summer program, they are all art majors. Of course, then high school and public school teacher, college level teacher. There's many jobs that you can get from uh, being studio art majors. And a lot of people do, you know, like me teach at the college on the side that I still make art and then uh, have exhibition. And a lot of people do that. And the high school teachers, they make work and they have exhibitions. So, you know, always that uh, uh, my concern as a, as a college student was like, how do I make a living doing this? But hey, there's a lot of jobs we can get. And uh, look, man, my, my kind of old man touching clay and then I get paid to teach. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. Another question, how long does project like this typically take? This, I can build this in a day. But day means 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., okay? So we don't get paid by hour. We get paid by project. I got to get it done. How long it takes, doesn't matter. So if I don't enjoy this, it's going to be very painful. But when I took ceramic class at the college when I came to U.S., I thought I found something. I was uh, probably the first time in my life that I just want to wake up and go to school and play with the clay. So I was lucky that I found something like that. So if uh, you come to college, you take all different classes and try everything out. And you might find something you really like and you might just wake up and run and go to studio and take a classes. And uh, yeah, probably something related to my childhood, they're playing with the clay in the bed. Hopefully, my parents think hopefully that paid off, because that was a mess. 
But uh, yeah, I just wanted to go back to school and make a lot of work. So I spend hours and hours in a studio. So a piece like this takes, you know, eight hours or so to make one. But uh, I'll be there at the studio for eight hours and get it done. So, I mean, fast, building fast doesn't mean it's good, but I just like uh, doing it, so. And ceramic people are known for uh, pretty good at the failing, because, uh, well, failing is not a very good word, but uh, this kind of piece takes some time to build. It goes in the fire, it might blow up. Because, you know, there's a moisture inside here. So when you put them on the heat, they might blow up. Or the way I build, this structure might not be good. So this piece might collapse on the ground. Many, many, many times, still happens. When I go home like this, next day I come back, I see my piece on the ground, it happens. But ceramic people are pretty good at dealing with a failing. When I was in graduate school, I made a graduate school means you build uh, for studio art, you go to Master of Fine Arts. So in the graduate school, I made a piece like an eight, 12 feet tall figure. So I mix about 1,000 to 2,000 pounds of clay a week and made a pieces. But then often, I don't know how to build that big. So often piece ends up on the ground. Come to school and all the pieces on the ground. And you know, ceramic people are pretty good at like shut down the brain and forget about it. Move on and make another one. So it's a pretty typical thing in, in ceramics and maybe art in general. We fail. And we are very good at the uh, problem solving skill. We, we have a very good problem solving skill. So question is, do you prefer hand building or wheel throwing? Can students use wheel if they come to school here? Yes. Like I said at the beginning, look, I make cup. So I don't know, we can zoom in on anything. Can you zoom this close or this? Maybe not. Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> so, you know, the cup, see, I don't know, yeah, yeah, here we go. You see that the people's face here and little sprinkles here. So this one has, this ball has, you see, you see the leaf, leaves on there and little face or something somewhere or the faces over here. And then inside has more drawing. Inside has, this is a white, so you can't quite see it, but inside has a, a flying guy. Guy's just jumping. <laughs> so, you know, beautiful thing about ceramic, I do make, I, we, have a 12, we have a 12 wheels or 15 wheels hiding somewhere. This one has a bird. And this one has a little head on the side. So, so yeah, we can do ceramics, wheel throwing. I teach both. And uh, hey, you know, people say wheel throwing and hand building kind of separates it, but I think wheel throwing is hand building too. It just happened to spin. So um, it's both hand building. So uh, yes, if you want to be potter, yes, come on over. And you know, a great thing about pottery is that you, uh, not just the pottery, sculpture too, but a great thing about clay is what you're doing is building canvas with a clay, which is 360 degree, and you can paint and draw on it. So forget about drawing on the canvas maybe, you know, just draw on the clay, right? You can paint, you can scratch, you know, you can bring a story, so. Yeah, hand building, sculpture, or wheel throwing, whichever. We're basically building the canvas to paint and, you know, tell stories. Let's check out the Raku kiln. Let's open them up. Yeah, can we do that? Yeah. All right, everyone. So I'd like to go over here to open up this Raku kiln. And my assistant, Sam, will help me out. Sam, let's put a jacket on.
So again, this is a primitive firing from Japan. Mostly uh, they uh, fire tea ball for tea ceremony. It's called raku kiln. Raku means uh, easy, fun, something like that in Japanese. And right now, this is about 1840 some kind of degree, okay? So if your parents says uh, uh, ceramic as uh, a baking, Tell them it's now, 1800 degree and cooking, uh, baking cookies. Probably they are burned to nothing. So firing is what it is. It goes really hot temperature right now. And there's a couple pieces in there I want to show you. So let's open this up. Ready? All right. All right, let's move this up and go over here, all right, get a tongue, and then get your piece move. Yeah, go, 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 okay, go, there we go. Yeah, pick it up and put them in the trash can, everything. One more, yeah, looks good. So what's happening here is we just got a really hot pot going into a sawdust. There's a lot of wood in there right now. Sometimes people use newspaper, leaves. Let's step back a little bit. You see that flame came out? So they're getting choked. They're getting uh, no oxygen in there. That's how they change color in here. Okay, this pot's like that, it's real hot. Oh. And normally we'll rest them for, uh, you know, it'd be nice if I can just leave it till it cools down. But today I guess uh, we just gonna open them up and see what's happening. What time is it? Eight. Okay. All right. So I guess this weekend we got enough time to leave this in here for a while. So let the pots to cool down and this process of a changing color is happening in here right now. So let's go back to our hand building parts over here. So especially a raku kiln like this, it's very easy. Trash can and a couple stuff to resist the fire and you're just gonna have to get a burner. That burner is a forced air burner, probably cost you about $1,000. But it's still cheaper than buying an actual kiln. There's more question here. Let's see, is a raku fire piece food safe? Is there a way to ensure that it's? Um, well, my country in Japan, it is food safe, but in America, it's known for not food safe. So, I don't know. You can use them, and if you get dizzy, stop using it. It's a bad. <laughs> It's not going to get you dizzy or anything. It just, uh, there's some metallic raku glaze of some metal in it. So I don't know it's, it's good to use them to actually eat out of it. But hey, in Japan, we use them for tea ceremony. So it should be all right. But I know in the U.S., we don't suggest people to use raku pots to uh, eat and drink out of it. And is drawing important part of a, your 3D art making process? Can you explain how you incorporate drawing for planning, making, etc, please? Okay. Yes, drawing is not an important part. It's a, it's a fun part of uh, ceramics. Again, we're building a three-dimensional canvas. I, I personally work is, is, is uh, sculpture, but 
Of course, I don't know. If you can Google search my name, I do make a parts too. So, you know, I have nothing against your pottery and I always love it. See, I have all these cups I make in a class and, you know, I like to draw on it because it's just fun to drink out of it. You are making, you're here to make one of a kind that never existed in the world. Okay, I don't know what you guys are eating and drinking out of it, but taking this class, I think people start thinking about shape of handles, shape of mugs, what's the bottom looks like. You know, that's something that we never thought about. I think it's great part about taking an art course is to uh, give you a different perspective to see things. And if you take art history class, think about it. It gives you a different perspective of the uh, world. But then art is always going through a time with uh, cultures and other part of a history. So, you know, if you didn't like actual history courses, if that made you sleepy, take an art history class to learn what happened in the world. That's the other way to look at the history, right? And back to the drawing parts. Yes, drawing is great. I mean, you know, I can draw anything you want. You are the maker. So also, you can see this as 3D canvas, okay? That's the fun part. You like painter, drawing, you like, uh, let's see, printmakers. You can do a printmaking on here, or you can draw, and you can paint with a glaze. You can do shiny, and you can do not shiny. Or can you get me a my piece from my table, the bird one? Yeah. So I show you some finished work I have. Ten more minutes. So you see, I just draw the line, and that already changes the landscape here on the piece. Maybe I'll draw some. Uh, you know, right now my garden is like a blooming time. A lot of flowers. You know, we all forget about we had a snow. So I'll, I'll draw some. Uh, See, I draw some uh, flower and so it's same like a drawing and painting measures, right? Like where you're gonna draw what? The composition. You're gonna study that in the college. But you see that some of the finished piece I have over here. You see lots of shiny parts, a lot of dry parts. You see X and all kiss and hugs. You got some melted glaze on top. So, you know, I, 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 I can make something and I can paint and draw and sculpt as a, you know, a painter. So this a, ceramics is a mixture of 2D and 3D. So uh, to me, if I want to paint, draw, but I want to sculpt, this is it. And I don't know, you know, when you come to college, if you can find something you really love, but I hope you take a lot of different classes and then uh, find what you love and hopefully, uh, you know, that'll, that'll continue for the rest of your life. And so far, I'm lucky. I'm doing this for a living. Think about it. When you get mid-40s, you're just playing with the dirt. Oh, God. This is awesome. You get dirt all over my shirt and go home and, hey, I got paid for this. I'm so proud. Uh, it's a lot of work, man. It's, uh, there's good and bad about studio art, of course. It's a lot of work. And like I said, a lot of failing experiences. But it is definitely really, really fun. And what those cool sculptures behind you? Uh, over here? Those sculpture over here were displayed at the Hendrix College uh, last month. So I think we have only five more minutes. So let's check out the piece over here. Yeah, pick it up from uh, in here. Go ahead and dunk it in the water. Ugh. There, Just make sure cam camera see that. Yeah, go ahead. I'll get another one. So, Sometimes it comes out right, sometimes not. Again, we're pretty good at the failing. 
If I want to get a one cup, we make 10 cups. That's kind of artist life, right? But you see, you see, go ahead and put another one in there. You see some metallic color going on. In what, 20 minutes? That's why it's called Raku, easy and fun. Okay, go ahead. So we, it looks like we got pretty similar results here, but this guy, look how bright insides are. You see that inside over here? <laughs> you see that different inside here? Can you get one more glove? So. Oh, it's hot. So we just pull off from 1800 degree. And here it is, a little greenish color you get, a little bumpy texture on the outside. And she have a drawing inside too. And one eye glazed became very metallic. And because we put them on the uh, trash can with the all leaves and stuff, the parts didn't have a glaze became black. And you see, I, you see a lot of leaves, I put them on here. Leaves, leaves, and little face, leaves, leaves, and little face, yeah. And then, uh, you know, always surprised after I did this many, many, many years, still I don't know what's gonna happen. And then when it comes out, it's always surprise and it's fun. Is it about two minutes? That's it? All right, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, if you uh, have a chance to come here and take ceramics, let's have fun.